Hey, Tom. Wayne, happy 2020. Yeah. What's that like? I don't know. What, let's see. What's over 6,000 here, but whatever. <laughs> That's another day's story. Yeah. Hopefully the uh, research uh, for that whale, they'll, they'll be able to communicate with him soon. And then, then, then they'll move the money. Press the money into that. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's interesting. Uh, what is it? It's January 13th, so our last show was two weeks ago prior to the Bills game. Yeah. And uh, I had the Bills by seven. And I by three. And up by 16, I was feeling pretty good. Yeah. Not not saying like we got it, but feeling pretty good. Well, and then a critical, well, he really didn't mean to just throw the ball to his right decision, which <laughs> I guess the thought police are now taking over. Yeah. Um, although when Cody Ford just turned around, they weren't able to say, well, he really wasn't blindsided. Right, he, he just wanted to kind of turn and get in his way. But, yeah, because the thought police, right, uh, the guy makes no attempt to say he uh, gives himself up. But, you know, he did because that's what the Gestapo in black thought. Well, and again, learn a lesson here. Uh, I thought the Bills fought him hard, very disappointed. Yeah. It was a win very winnable game. you got to make more plays than they did, obviously. Yeah. Um, the uh, but that's where in this league you get that home game and that call uh, maybe doesn't happen yeah. and the other one is um, yeah. in OT Knox and uh, Mitch Morris I yeah. don't know running down the field nobody gets the guy and he hits Allen but he hits him in the head yeah and but I guess you can't change overtime with a call there no you can't do it unless there. you're in Shocksboro unless you're in Navy Blue. But yeah, the, and the other thing that was bad about that is somebody was saying, I, I read it somewhere, well, he, at that point he's a runner. Yet you still can't go helmet to helmet to a runner. Player. God almighty. By the way, too, uh, I liked everything about the uh, press conferences from our coach and GM. Yeah. They, they showed their grit. And no, the referees didn't cost us that game. Quite honestly, we got no. to play. Watson makes a hell of a play in OT. Yeah. Um, I think a little bit of... Matt Milano's probably sleepless nights. He's got him wrapped up, but I think that rule about roughing the quarterback, resting yeah. their head, but me crush him and, and whatever. Yeah. It's over. I don't think um, <laughs> I don't think uh, the referees <laughs> cost us the game. They made more plays when it came down to it to beat us. They did. And, and uh, God, we had so. It's one of those games that will haunt us because it goes down to we had so many chances. And of course, the one that haunts me because I, I for anybody that. Watches me on or listens to me on Twitter. That third and eighteen is the new tackle Mark Ingram in Super Bowl twenty five. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, you can't let that happen. And not only do they back up too far, but then he catches it and they kind of wait and hesitate, and, and he gets it. You gotta close. You gotta close faster. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, I think it's a learning experience. I think this team will learn. Mm -hmm. I, I have a ton of faith in Bean and McDermott. Mm -hmm. They're both on the same page. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's another off season, but watching the playoffs since, by the way, New England losing, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank and you. Uh, it was great to see them go down. Um, I was uh, kind of happy to see Lamar Jackson go down. Me too. Um, I, I saw that game live here in Buffalo, and I'm still not convinced that that's an unstoppable situation. He's the size of Tyrod Taylor. He slings the ball, and I think Tennessee kind of side arm. did what um, kind of – took the game plan that we had against them, which I'm not making it up, they actually, they said, actually said that, yeah. and kind of made them one-dimensional, and you still got to throw from the pocket in this league, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> one yeah. thing that's been obvious, too, is what we've said on this show before, um, because defensive players are more um, uh, groomed for the pass, you don't have the 6'4", 260-pound linebackers anymore. No. Uh, Matt Milano's 222. I think... Uh, yeah. Edmonds, I think, is 245, but he's 6'5". Right. So when you see this Derrick Henry, this big back, that can catch you off surprise, uh, catch you off guard. Philly did it to us here with their big backs. Yeah, they did. And um, I think that's something you've heard us say it. Give me that big back in the offseason to go with uh, the big back. A Devin Singletary. But all of this is funny because we were talking before we went on. Some of it's not. All right, so we got, we got Jackson. Let's just say um, I'm not sure that's sustainable year over year. That's number one. Number two, you got the big back and you got the small linebackers. Okay, I get it, all right? Um, and he's mowing people down. He just set an NFL record. But then at some point, does somebody put their bigger backs in and say, beat me with your arm? So it is a chess match, and some things are going to work <laughs> short term, but maybe aren't sustainable. They also, Baltimore, though, did run the ball well, too, with their backs. Yeah, they did. They, Tennessee just shut that down. I think Tennessee basically said, 
beat us with your arm. And, and he could The turnovers, too. A turnovers. lot of turnovers in that game. And uh, yep. the attitude he had. He got a little cocky with his teammates and mm -hmm. took up personal fouls. And But that's the entire the in, inner fire. Yep. And our guy has it, too, although I don't think he takes the personal fouls. He gets them on him. Yeah. Um, Without him being called. Right. So uh, <laughs> uh, I think we're, we've narrowed down my pick. Baltimore's out. Yep. Kind of glad about that anyway. So, uh, yeah, I said Baltimore too, but I did say San Francisco. So who do you have in the East? Uh, uh, I think I said the 49ers also. Okay. And I think they will take the cheese heads because I've hope so. seen about all I can take of that shit. I, I can't take him anymore. No stupid State Farm commercials. I want right. to vomit. And uh, I, can't, I think Kansas City, although Tennessee oh, will boy. pose a problem there, but I think Kansas City wow. at home. 41 straight points in a playoff yeah. game. Seven straight touchdowns. Are you kidding me? Yeah, kind of, you know. Wow. Kind of unveiled Houston, but the, uh, their D there. But boy, the kid was on. And they, you know, and what are you going to do? Nothing. You know, as Ralph Kruger would say, uh, the Bills need more offense. Well, and, and he also <laughs> would say that the play on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you got to play on so both sides of the puck or the ball. But back to the Bills, uh, Tom, right on about Bean and, and, uh, and McDermott. Um, you watch that press conference and it exudes confidence, but confidence to say that we know we need more. Right. So you, you just, I personally just love the way these guys go about it. And I also think mentioning, we're going to make Blaming themselves for some of it. Blaming which, themselves. And I think they mean it, the grit in his face. Mm -hmm. And I, hey, I get mad at Sean McDermott sometimes too, like we all do. But yeah. I, I'm a, I believe, I uh, hate to use the phrase, but I, I think they're in the right believe. direction. And with this guy drafting, and we have money under the cap. I don't expect and don't want them to spend it all. No, they won't. And but be smart. wise. We need that big receiver. Mm -hmm. I still think maybe he's on the roster, Duke Williams. Mm -hmm. He's a big, tough guy, big and tough. Nothing, you can't be over-smurfed. No. You know, Derek, uh, the, the return kid, um, Roberts, yeah. a lot of those kicks, they kick out of the end zone and they can control punts against them. Yeah. You got the other kid, 19, um, I can't think of his name right Isaiah now, McKenzie. Isaiah McKenzie. You can't have both. One or the other and get me a big receiver. Give me a big receiver. If it's Duke, great. If not, draft me one draft or both. Him. You know? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, usually when we get to this point, well, for many years we didn't go to the playoffs, but we went to the playoffs. This feels different to me this time. I don't feel like, okay, we got kicked off the mountain, which we did, and it all starts over in August in preseason and camp and all that, but I really firmly believe, even with a, quote, tougher schedule on paper, that these guys are going to get it done. I think it's a unique set of players and, and a very dialed in front office. Well, and they get knocked on by our local gendarme, the Yellow Pages and <laughs> the cat rag. rag. Um, cat litter rag, but um, drafting certain type of players that had that inner motivation, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we have quite a, a bunch of them on a team. We're going to lose uh, Lorenzo, yeah. Um, but we need to find a replacement for him. But um, <clears throat> this team's got some serious fire, and um, Bill's Mafia's not going to let him stop either. I mean, they're kudos to all the fans and everybody run these stadiums. They take them over. They take them over. Road, so. It's hysterical. I, I'm, I feel good about them. It, it sucked uh, losing. It hurt. It hurt. But uh, I feel really good about the future of the Bills, and I think, so. I think, so. I think uh, we'll go from there. Um, Sabres, disappointed. Uh, um, we said it here, and we get feedback, negative, negative. It's just truth. Who was that Western guy? Uh, Micah, Sheriff Micah? Ain't, ain't Brad just fact, and he'd spit at the dog? Who yes. Was it? I don't think it was Micah, because he was the worst sheriff in... <laughs> The West. But anyways, um, um, it's just fact. We have, right now, with injury, we have Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhart and eight fourth-line players. Muckers everywhere. We, we, we went out and got for a leak, and somebody asked me, a friend of mine asked me, what do you think, Wayne, is going to make a difference? I said, throw them in a bag, go to Wegmans, get a, ba get a bag, grocery bag, throw them in with the rest of the muckers, shake them up, throw it out like dice, and the first nine to come out, there's the muckers. And we said it here, too, for you that listen past the five-minute mark. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not, we'll talk later. We're not happy about the analytics. It's not compete. <laughs> it's not that they're not trying. It's not that they're not bottling. It's not that their feet aren't moving. Bottle. They're Bottle. not good enough. And when Vancouver, who we just played the other day, yep. is playing all 60 minutes, and so are we, Vancouver's most likely going to win the game. 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 Yeah. Tampa Bay, Boston, most likely going to win the game. Correct. Last time we played Detroit. Detroit, who's not good. Who's not good. Everybody was playing hard. We won the we game. Won five, it's kind of that simple fa fa fact, and folks. Were you, you going to swear? 
No, folks. Folks, okay. You know, the, but there's the thought police now. On, uh, well, YouTube. there is, and <laughs> we're you, another mucker. Uh, I don't think the GM the and bag. the coach are on the same page. He calls up players. The guy doesn't use them. Yeah. Um, well, Miller being scratched for like the 800 times. Don't get it. We gave up a second and a fifth for for Miller. Kruger, and he got no play. People will say now. Well, Kruger doesn't have anything. Well, I'm going back to the start of the season. The lack of the use of um, Skinner. Yeah. He started getting because his quote was, "Guys, and it's there if you read it. Don't trust me. He's he's struggling on one side of the puck. He's a 40 goal scorer. Screw that. I wouldn't trust him. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> and and defensive responsibility. These are all comments made by teams that can't score can't goals. Score goals. Put everybody going to the paint. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You got to know what to do. You see Johan and Gergensen, Scotty Wilson last night, perfect pass yeah. from Eichel. Yeah. They don't have hands, everybody. No it's hands. not that these guys aren't trying. They are not good enough. Yeah. And we got a lot of muckers. I mean, and that's muckers for us are the guys <laughs> that roll out there, try hard, bump you around a little bit. Well, but, you know, the gun to their mother's head, they can't score. We and and Kruger, I, I'm going to say it again. When you punish certain guys because of lack of effort or yeah. whatever, you better do it across the board. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Rodriguez, Bogosian, mm -hmm. Miller, mm -hmm. um, Yoki Hari a little bit. So um, now, now if you're those guys, right, you got to be looking at these games going, oh, Johan Larson, he, two, just, he just poked a guy with the stick, got two minutes and they scored on us, and he's right back out. Two penalties on one shift against the Bruins, unheard of. completely turned the game, yep. that was the winning goal, and he's back out on the next shift. And literally the next shift. I, that becomes a loserism, everybody. Yeah. I'm sitting on the bench going, hey, I'm sitting and he don't. Right. It, when you win, hey, whatever the coach says goes, right? right? But we've had too much of it for too long. I, I don't know. My wife said to me the other night, what's the answer? I mean, we've had I, two different ownership groups, uh, nine coaches. I don't have an answer. Gee, I'm, and here's why I don't have an answer quickly. If you look down at our prospects, they're poor, at least on the forward lines. So we got nobody else to save us there. It looks like goaltending probably about two years away, though. So you're waiting on that. You don't have any forwards except Dylan Cousins, and God knows what kind of a professional he'll be. He's a great junior player. And then uh, and then you got muckers constantly, and we're well, at the salary cap. I mean, it, the whole thing is we, a complete mess. The last two years, this year and last, we supposedly brought in coaches that were good with young guys because – being down low and being a lottery team, you're drafting mm -hmm. higher-ended players, but yet Kids. I don't see the development. No. Now, do they bring Dylan Cousins in and say, okay, I'm going to put you on the fourth line with uh, no. Michael Frolock no, don't and do Scott Will, And then people are going to say, well, he's not getting points. <laughs> I don't like his battle. We're sending him back to Moose Jaw. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the problem, right, we have now is that we're, t we're so bad. We're trying to force kids in early. I don't know if we permanently ruined, middle ruined Middlestad or not. I pray not. Um, but, you know, he's not doing much. Um, and, and we've got these guys that can't play in this league. I mean, let's well, just face it. Also remember, a couple of years ago down there, we had forwards down there that weren't doing anything. And then when you read between the lines, we had no centers. No. They actually That's loaned true. Timmy Kennedy, yeah. local kid guys, and from Carolina to play center down there. And our forwards started to get in the puck. started getting the puck. When you send Middlestat down to uh, the AHL and you got Kevin Porter. Remy Ellie. And These Porter. guys, you know, he's got six points in 11 games. Yeah. He hasn't been strong on the other side of the puck. Listen, we need goals scored. Yeah. Screw the other side of the puck. That's what a goalie and D's for. Yeah, All got, right, Ralph? We got plenty of muckers. By the way, if you see him in a local gym mill with the fake glasses, you know, <laughs> tell him, come on, Ralph, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's been really frustrating. I, I went off, I sounded off on Facebook the other night. It's very, very hard to watch. You're talking about guys here. I mean, guys, 50 years of watching the Sabres, we love them. <laughs> but my God, it's embarrassing. They're they're well, really bad. You know, you, you, and you got some guys that have asked for a trade. I I don't blame them. Okay, yeah. I'm surprised more haven't. I'm sure more have. Right. But you get Furleek, who was struggling in Calgary. Calgary. Who said, "Well, just time to move on." I don't want guys like that. I want somebody that's going to make it better where he is. Yep. Just time to move on. Just time and to move we're on. told by our coach that he's so strong on both sides of the puck. Oh, cut it out. He yeah. couldn't score to save his mother's life. Listen. We're going to have to turn to politics because we're right. at the five-minute mark. Yeah, um, real quick, politically-wise, I know you a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of you don't want to hear it, but great hit on <coughs> Ashmak Samalama. Um, <laughs> take him out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, it's not. We are safer, and uh, Botox and them know it. 
And, um, and guess what? The Iranians back down. We didn't write them a $180 billion check like our last, uh, the great healer. We bombed the shit out of them. And they said, you know what, maybe we should just, let's talk about this. Hey, nobody wants war. But when that happened, our media, mm -hmm. by the way, NBCSN mm -hmm. reported that the bases were completely leveled. And at least 30 People servicemen were, were wounded and killed. My daughter was sick. I was sick to hear it. It was false reporting. False reporting. Irresponsible reporting. Liberal when reporting. You talk about fake news. They didn't hit anything. Thank God. Yeah. But Whether it's liberal reporting. They just want to make the president look bad, so it's liberal reporting. Everybody was killed. And look at this bozo. He took out this guy. I think it's an assassination. We should impeach him for assassination. Bernie, Are you out of your Bernie mind? Bernie Sander said it's a, it's a political assassination. He's literally out of his mind. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren isn't quite sure what happened. Okay? <laughs> Bernie Mayor Sanders. Pete, Mayor, go ahead. Mayor Pete, well, he's... <laughs> He's walking on sunshine, let's just say that. I, but Don't open a window, fly right out. Local, and I have nothing against that. Local colleges, a lot of students were upset, they didn't want to get drafted. Right. And I don't want anybody's young person, I don't want mine, nobody's. We all worry about our men and women. Bring them all home, please. And that is what our president's been trying to do, yet being blamed by the left that, oh, now we're creating a caliphate. Screw that. Can't all wait. Right? But these brave men and women that sign up for our military... Mm -hmm. And go over and fight, and many of them get maimed and wounded mentally, physically, if, if, if not killed. Come back here. <clears throat> the hospitals were deplorable. They get forgotten. That This administration is working on that. But here's the thing that really irks me. They're afraid Order. of a draft. But when s football games and these games start and someone takes a goddamn knee, that's a lack of respect to the military. And those men and women go over there. If you got a beef about whatever it is, go to the steps of the city hall. Right. And by the way, he's still unemployed because he's a piece of shit. And he started, and he still doesn't know what he's kneeling about. You stand and salute that flag and show and be proud of those men and women that did a great job taking Akmak Salamaki out. <laughs> Akmak. Yeah, it's a joke. Um, that angers me. Bernie Sanders has been in the... Is he a senator or congressman? I think Senate. I don't know what he is. Bernie Sanders is a piece of shit, but anyway... He's, he wasn't as good as uh, Thurman Thomas either. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Sanders. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, Bernie uh, has been in politics forever. Um, he sponsored three bills in the last 167 years of his life in politics. One of them was to name a rock something. The guy's a complete useless piece of crap. All right? See through it, liberals. See through it. My great, great, great grandfather, Bull Mullen. Bull Mullen. He's a hero. <laughs> God bless him. He was the first one to incorporate tomatoes in his pack because when things went bad, he'd pop a tomato and lay wounded on the field. <laughs> That's why I'm here today. But he used to say, <laughs> it looks like chocolate and tastes like chocolate. It's probably chocolate, or nowadays it could be a chocolate substitute. The bottom line is, <laughs> those colors don't run. God bless the USA. Well put. Now, we're going to go off in a little... Uh, today I got an email from YouTube, and um, we got some a analytics on this channel. A little disappointing. We're hearing that uh, people, on average, about three, a little under four minutes in are, are checking out. We're hearing that by the end of watching it, which is about 20 minutes every program, uh, th only 37% are left to watch the whole video. Um, if this ain't entertaining enough for you, we're sorry. We'll... But we're going to keep doing it, whether we will you watch not or not. Go to nudity. No. <laughs> or make sexual overtones to bring the ratings up. <laughs> if you turn it on and you don't like it, leave it run for analytics sake. <laughs> we are working on a sponsor, possibly Dr. Now. I haven't told you about it. <laughs> Dr. Now. The pronoun, the pronoun uh, surgeon of Fat Demand. <laughs> we're working on getting a little uh, sponsorship from Dr. Now. Well, if Now can help and, us. And possibly a little help. <laughs> If now can help us, we could be much closer. Put the guy right we're, over the brink, too. <laughs> We'd be real tight in here because there'd be a lot Did less. Did you ever fat. see when he walks in a room and he says, How'd you get that thing? <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy now. Sure, it's a lot of fun. Take it Anyways. easy now. <clears throat> All right, well, listen, uh, i got to turn this off and I'm showing you a real bad start of me. But happy, uh, we got to get going. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Happy New Year. Buffalo, 47 degrees, January 13th. Ow! Nice. Very nice, very nice. And, uh, yeah, go Sabres. <laughs> hey, the best is got it's the best is yet to come. It's gotta be. Yeah, twenty twenty-five. I think the GM might do something, but they just had to cook. Fire him. 
They just had the cookie bake, the peanut butter jelly cook-off. What's next? Right now, the managers are all getting together and checking their things for the big trade deadline. Okay. But a lot of the big work's done then, but then they get no, pieces. No, they wait. They get pieces, pieces and what do they call it? Um, um, mm. Currency. Currency. For, for the June meeting. For the June meeting. Then the draft comes and they miss that. Then they're in August. Then they wait because they can't, they well, really they don't understand. The next goes, and then they all go to cottage. <laughs> and then, by the way, I went up to Canada with my son for a birthday. Had a great time. Can't get into Canada with a DWI. But they expect every Tom, Dick, and Jose to get in this country with whatever they got in the background. Just saying. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>